Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Michelle Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. It's been a couple weeks since we dropped our last story, man. I don't really feel like it's been too much going on for us to really make a story about it. But in the last couple weeks, I have noticed a lot of people shouting us out and uh, I guess giving us our credit for breaking um, the Bandman Kevo snitch story. If you haven't seen the story, uh, check it out on our channel. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Also, man, shout out my boy Truth Tellers, man. Shout out 16, shout out visuals, man. A lot of people are starting to pick up on this story. Um, something that we first broke back in January. Um, we got the paperwork uh, in the description of the video. So if that's something that you haven't heard about or haven't seen, man, I definitely think you should check it out. Check it out on our channel, man. Bandman Kevo confirmed as a federal informant. We got another Chicago rapper being, uh, there were rumors about him snitching and now some of these rumors are starting to be confirmed. Um, today we gonna tell y'all about the homie King Lil J and FBG Butter. And did FBG Butter really snitch on King Lil J? So on Tuesday, May 5th, 2015, rising Chicago rapper Lil J and a group of his friends, including 25 year old Philmon Renzine, uh, went to purchase marijuana uh, at a Calumet City uh, parking lot. Um, they were greeted with a 22-year-old uh, man who was, I guess, there to sell him weed. Something happened in that situation and a big argument uh, was created. After the argument, the group actually left the parking lot and then they returned back, you know, shortly after. Um, when they left the parking lot, some people are saying that uh, they contacted one of their friends to go pick up a firearm. And there are other reports saying that one of the women in the car, who happened to be uh, Mr. Razine's girlfriend, had a gun, supplied him with a gun. When they came back to the parking lot, they couldn't find the guy. Um, they circled around and they happened to find him in an alley adjacent to that parking lot. Shots rang out. Uh, the drug dealer was actually shot four times, but had a gun on him himself. He returned fire and hit. 25 year old uh film on Renzine multiple times after the shooting the group fled the scene to hide the guns and when police arrived the group happened to be back at the scene i guess they came back to the scene based off of the 22 year old drug dealer's statement he did make a statement at the scene based off of his statement based off of the statements of other witnesses that i guess saw what happened in the parking lot and in the alley and based off of some statements given by the people, by the group in the car, all of the members in the car were arrested. Uh, Mr. Renzine was uh, transported to a hospital. Uh, he was in critical condition with multiple gunshot wounds and everybody else uh, was arrested for attempting to commit murder on the drug dealer. When they, le when they originally left the parking lot, there were conflicting reports about why they left the parking lot. Some people said, hey, they went to go pick up some guns. Some people said they went to go figure out what they wanted to do. They already had the guns. But later on, there was another woman that was arrested by the name of Brittany Dupree. Reports are that that is the person that they got the guns from when they left the parking lot the original time. And police uh, went to her home and actually found the guns that were used uh, in the shootout you know on her person so she was also arrested it's important I, I feel like it's important to know everybody and what happened because it's like everything after the actual event is real murky it's real muddy um there were uh three women arrested there was rashida young who was the girlfriend of uh of film on resume there was a woman by the name of monique lane calhoun who um, we haven't been able to find out much information about what happened to her after the arrest or how much time she served. Um, Miss Young actually is currently still incarcerated. We don't know if it's for the same crime, but um, we were able to find through an inmate search, she'll be incarcerated until at least 2025. And then there was another woman uh, by the name of Brittany Dupree, who like I said, was not arrested at the scene, but was arrested later uh, when police, you know, went to her home and found her with the guns that were used uh, at the shootout. I say that because Lil J very soon after the arrest, I'm talking days after the arrest, um, while, they, while, they were, while they were still fighting an attempted murder, someone very close to him went on social media and let people know that FBG Butter, 
a government named Rakeem Wilton was already snitching like eight like quickly like it was it was one of them things where it didn't really take a lot of time King Lil J his family people that rock with him went on social media let everybody know man hey Rakeem Hilton FBG butter he telling and he telling fast we want to lay this out too of the four people are initially arrested um King Lil J eventually served seven of a 14 year sentence um Philmon Renzine, who was initially charged with attempted murder, he ended up dying in the hospital. His girlfriend, uh, Rashida Young, like I said, she's still in prison to this day. FBG Butter actually received a four-year sentence, so he see, he he served four years. And like I said, the woman, uh, Monique Lane Calhoun, I wasn't able to find out like exactly what happened to her what they call it it's a little loose string right there man because we don't know what happened to monique so we got Lil j saying hey man it's this dude fbg butter he told on me but then there's other people where you don't really know what happened to them how much time they serve where they are like you know what i mean so uh we want to put that out there originally from jail Lil j claimed that rakeem wilton would be testifying against him if he took it to trial and there were rumors that butter had signed an agreement to cooperate with the authorities now that rumor what we will all find out later uh like i'm gonna tell you we found out it was partially true hilton he never testified so it was like it was kind of up in the air like did he tell he signed the agreement people are saying he signed this cooperation agreement but he didn't cooperate or he didn't testify it was a lot going on so you know just last week Lil J kind of made a big splash on the internet fresh home from a seven-year bid uh, not only was he back home, he was releasing new music, he was doing interviews, and he also claimed that he had the proof at this time that FBG Butter had snitched on him. McGraw, who that's his name, Jeff McGraw, he uh, eventually released some of Butter's paperwork and it looked pretty clear. We gonna read y'all, we gonna show the paperwork right now, we gonna, uh, you know what I'm saying, we gonna read a couple excerpts from the paperwork. So this, so this was in the cooperation agreement. In the cooperation agreement, it says the information provided by R. Wilton today during this meeting was consistent with the videotape statement R. Wilton provided investigators during the initial murder investigation. R. Wilton remembered exact quotes he provided investigators initially as well as whom he was quoting and still willing to assist with convicting the others charged with first degree murder of Phil Monrenzin after reviewing and discussing the information wilton and his attorney expressed concern with jeffrey mcgraw who was also charged with first degree murder along with r wilton mcgraw has made numerous attempts to have r wilton withdraw his original testimony implicating mcgraw mcgraw in the murder of phil monrazine mcgraw has sent notes through various means to intimidate r wilton and believes mcgraw arranged for R. Wilton to be called down to the jail library. Once there, McGraw, accompanied by two large inmates, provided R. Wilton with a blank affidavit and instructed Wilton to recant his original statement on paper. Wilton completed the affidavit, however, he did not provide the affidavit to McGraw and destroyed the paperwork prior to turning it over. Wilton says he is in fear for his life and was moved to a separate detention block to stay away from McGraw, but McGraw still managed to see Wilton and consistently demands Wilton recant his statements. So not only did Lud J drop the proffer that was signed by Hilton, but he also produced the actual agreement signed by Hilton to testify if J took it to trial. So in reading the cooperation agreement, it looks like Hilton's original statement put the group at the scene which was enough for the arrest when you add in the other witness statements. Also, it would seem that there was an altercation where Hilton claims Lil J approached him while in jail to intimidate him and to get him to change his story. Uh, Hilton, uh, uh, he originally did change his story, but never actually handed that paperwork over to McGraw. And he contacted his attorney and was moved to a separate detention block. I believe this is the real issue with the snitching allegations. Um, did the things Hilton said in his original statement aid the police in the original arrest? I don't really think so. I believe that the victim, the 22 year old uh, drug dealing victim, he lived, he shot back, he defended himself. He was allowed to, you know, defend himself in that in that situation. He's the one who told the police, "Hey man, uh, Lil J came to buy some weed 
they got mad and start shooting at me. I'm I'm almost 100% positive that the reason that they were originally arrested had to do with the witness who survived. Now, once in jail, Hilton made the mistake of speaking to the police at all. I don't believe Hilton wanted to snitch. I don't believe he was trying to snitch. I don't believe Hilton even thought he did something wrong. I watched interviews years later. So years later, Butter got out. I watched some of the interviews where he addresses these snitching allegations. I don't think he believed that he was actually involved in the crime. His initial statement was more of a, I saw two people shooting at each other. Um, it, it was more like he was a witness to it. So I don't believe at the time that he made the original statement that he feared that his statement would get him or Lil J like jail time. But then once they were arrested, uh, you know, Hilton was instructed by his attorneys. Hey, man, one of your guys made a statement and it, and it puts y'all at the crime. It makes you guys look guilty. And at that point, when you got Lil J approaching dude with, with, with other guys around large inmates, they, they making them change his paperwork. That stuff, once that happened to Butter, damn Butter went and he, you know, told what he had to tell in order to you know make sure that he was safe um i believe that's why there's a difference between the time that jay got and the time that butter got um the murder charges were eventually dropped they were dropped down to reckless firearm for both parties there was only evidence that resin um who actually went by another name so this is the other crazy thing uh this dude, uh, Fillmore Renzine, was originally from Seattle, Washington. Um, he also went by the name of Aphram Haley. I believe he was uh, from some sort of African descent, maybe like Eritrean or Ethiopian. Um, and he had a string of shootings and crimes in Seattle, Washington that he left behind when he came to Chicago. Uh, details are sketchy about why he came to Chicago. But, man, he was a young shooter, savage, out there in Washington. He came to Chicago and he kept basically up the same you know up the same characteristics um all of the evidence shows that Renzine shot at the drug dealer and the drug dealer shot back at him and i think that because uh butter's original statement it did put him at the scene but it didn't put a gun in in jay's hand it didn't say oh this guy was shooting at him it just said hey we were there and our friend got in a shootout with another guy one thing when you talking to the police man anything used against you like anything you say can be used against you so even if you think you helping yourself or helping your friends or hey i'm gonna make it seem like it was just him shooting and we was just there as witnesses no you're supposed to say nothing like at the end of the day you're not supposed to say nothing to the people because they could take something that you think that you're helping with and they could use it against you i believe that's what happened with fbg butter initially and then when Lil J saw that it was hurting him you know he put the pressure on him and butter you know folded under pressure he moved to the cell block he told his attorney the attorneys told the judge it really made jay look guilty that's why jay got the seven years as opposed to butter only doing four they really went down for the same crime but when you add in the intimidation when you add in you know the gang type of activities that Lil J, you know, butter told Lil J, you know, told on Lil J for that adds more time. You know that aggravates the sentence, stuff like that. I believe that's why he got the seven instead of the four, like how butter did. When thinking about all of that, can you really say that FBG butter was the reason Lil J got seven years? Did he really snitch on Lil J to get him that time? I'm not sure. Um, like I said, let's run it back. The initial victim, the 22-year-old weed dealer, he made a statement at the scene. Um, he was cleared, and it was determined that he fired back in self-defense. Um, there were other witnesses that put that group at the scene, as well as Butter's initial statement put that group at the scene. Um, but none of those things were any more damaging than, like I said, the statement from the victim who was shot and had to kill a man in self-defense. I'm pretty sure that man's statement is what you know got everybody this time so then the next question is how did the police find where the guns were one of the craziest parts of the story to me was uh the britney dupree person um because it seems that they went to buy the weed and maybe they only had one gun in the car uh, it seems like the woman rashida young 
had a gun on her that she provided to her boyfriend and that's the gun that you know he died uh, uh he died with that gun in his hand um but then it seems like they went to go get more guns so Brittany dupree was arrested for providing them with guns as well as hiding the guns after the fact um and a big question that i had in this story is how did they find the guns um i can see how they knew you know who was there uh, you know there were a lot of witnesses like i said the, the victim was a witness so but who saw where they went to put the guns up so that was one of the biggest questions that i had in this story that's still not been you know answered but definitely someone in that group gave the police that information because those were the only people that knew where they went to go get the guns and then go take the guns back to answer these questions we reached out to fbg butter as well as Lil j now that the case is over they can both talk about it uh we can maybe get some answers while we await a response uh we would definitely like to hear you guys and what you think um do you think fbg butter snitched on the group including Lil j uh, or do you think the police had enough information to arrest anybody just based on the victim and the other witness statements um and did you notice that one person in the group who was arrested like i said we never were able to find out what happened to her how much time did she do what was she eventually convicted for or was she ever even convicted um so we've never found out out we've never found that out uh in our time doing our research on this story and i think that's a a, a big string that's loose because if you claiming that one guy snitched but there was this other person arrested and you have never heard what happened to them and it's like they disappeared off the map that's a little shaky you know it's hard to put it on one person when you know it's these all these other people involved but um man hey let us know what you think man and make sure you like comment and subscribe if you haven't already man it's street certified news your number one source for urban news and it's your boy emre Guapo, man we out